In this video, we will learn about how to log data collected by the M1K board. This is especially useful if we have signals that are changing very slowly. So in this example, what we'll go over is a charge and a discharge cycle of a capacitor. And we will make the capacitor discharge very slowly. And because this is going to be a slow process, we are going to use this data logger tool to collect all that data. And then we will try to uh, save that data into a CSV file so that we can imp later import it to MATLAB. So we are going to collect some voltage data, data in this demo. The, the tool that we are focusing on here is the Alice M1K data logger tool uh, that is uh, the icon over here on my desktop. So what we'll do for this demo is we'll work with this particular circuit here. So let me talk about the circuit first and then we'll go into building the circuit and then measuring things. So we have only two components. We have a resistor of value 10 kilo ohm, which is brown, black, orange uh, color coded. And the capacitor that we are charging and then discharging through this resistor is 220 microfarad. So this is a, the biggest capacitor that is available to you uh, in your parts kit. You can obviously combine more capacitors in parallel to increase the overall capacitance. However, just by, if you look at one capacitor, this is the biggest one that is available to you in the parts kit. Um, and the, this is how it looks like. So uh, it has a long lead, which is the anode, and the short lead, that's the cathode or the negative supply, a uh, negative terminal. And the short lead, the negative terminal of the uh, capacitor also has a white strip uh, alongside that. And you will clearly see a 220 microfarad value written on top of the barrel capacitor. So that's the one that we are using. Um, the capacitor is essentially used to store electric charge. So far in our classes, we have been looking at uh, a voltage supply to supply us power and a resistor that can absorb power, but we have not talked about electrical components that can store charge or store energy. Um, there are two common electric uh, components that can store energy. One is capacitor, the other is the inductor. Uh, the capacitor stores the energy in the form of electric field, that's the one that we are using today, and the inductor stores its energy in the magnetic field. We'll be looking at the inductors uh, later in the class, uh, later in the course. So let's talk about how the capacitor is going to charge and then discharge later. So what I'll do is I'll put a cap resistor and I'll also connect that resistor to a capacitor. So I've connected resistor and capacitor in parallel with each other and the value of my resistor is say R and I'm using 10 kilo ohms here, this is R1. Let me zoom in on this so that you guys can see it a little bit better. And the capacitor that I'm using is 220 microfarad. And I've connected both the ends to ground terminal here. And I'm going to connect it. Um, and what I'm going to do is first use my uh, five volt pinout of the M1K to charge my capacitor to five volts. And once it gets charged to five volts in a very short duration of time, I'm going to disconnect the plus five volts and allow the capacitor to discharge. And as it is discharging, it'll discharge exponentially and I'm going to monitor how it discharges. I'm gonna record that data. So how do you charge and discharge? Well, I'm going to connect this point to five volts that goes to the M1K. And as soon as uh, a couple of seconds go by, I'm going to disconnect that over here while I constantly monitor the voltage across the resistor and the capacitor. Both They are both in parallel, so I can 
uh, measure the voltage across uh, the capacitor uh, which is going to be the same as the voltage across the resistor here and the capacitor now is going to be the the supply of electric charge because no we no longer have the plus 5 volts it was already charged to 5 volts so now it's going to slowly discharge and the only way it can discharge is through the resistor so the resistor now is going to absorb that energy and dissipate it in the form of heat so the question is how long will this process last of discharging we have an equation for that so let me go down a little bit and then talk about the equation so if i was if i was if i was calling the voltage across the capacitor vc vc in the discharge cycle so this is specifically for discharge vc is going to equal v in or vo whatever you want to call it the initial charge the input charge like the 5 volts multiplied by e to the negative t divided by tau so it's an exponential discharge t is your time variable tau is the characteristic time constant and in this case it is simply the product of the resistor and the capacitor that are involved so r1 times c1 this is specifically for discharge the equation for charging is different it also has an exponential but it is different um, so given our values the time constant or the characteristic time constant is 10k multiplied by 220 micro which is 10 to the negative 6 and if you solve this in seconds you are going to get 2.2 seconds so it's 2.2 seconds is one time constant for for this particular circuit that's the characteristic time constant here so it's going to look something like this if i sketch this exponential I, i'm going to expect that the voltage across the capacitor vc here with respect to time is going to jump up to 5 volts and then if when when until i discharge it is going to be a flat line and as soon as i remove my plus 5 volts is going to start discharging and that particular um, graph, that particular line, is going to be the function uh, V in 5 e to the negative t divided by 2.2. So that's my claim. Let us try to uh, do this experimentally, and then we can also um, look at it uh, in, the, in, in MATLAB later on. Okay, so I hope you found that discussion helpful. Let's get back to our circuit here. Zoom out a bit. And then let's try to build the circuit here. So as you can see, you, we have the circuit on the slide. Uh, R1 is the same one that we, we have been talking about. So let me bring a protoboard here and put down two components, R1 and C1. R1 is of value 10K, orange, black, and sorry, uh, brown, black, and orange I put put it on my protoboard and in parallel I'm going to put the uh, capacitor the 220 microfarad barrel capacitor the uh, electrolytic capacitor I've connected them in parallel which means that they are sharing the ends uh, now what I'm going to do is connect ground so I'll connect the short end of the capacitor to the ground terminal of M1K. Any one of the grounds will work. And then the long end of the capacitor, which is shared by the resistor as well, I'm going to connect that to A in. This is only for the measurement of that discharge voltage. So, so far my circuit is complete, but right now uh, oh, I, I've forgotten to plug my board in. So let me plug the board in. The light should come on. Um, and now I'm ready to charge my capacitor. The way I would charge my capacitor is simply by connecting a, a wire. To One of the ends is going to be the positive terminal or the anode of the capacitor, the long end. The other, whenever I want to charge it, I'll plug it into the 5 volts terminal. Right now, I'm not going to do that because right now I'm going to bring up my data logger tool. So I'm going to double click on data logger. M1K data logger is going to bring up a window such as this. Uh, actually, let me just uh, put it over here. 
it is also going to give me uh, a tool uh, very similar to the meter source tool so that I can uh, configure the channels in uh, as a source or as a measure unit but I'm not going to be doing that I'm just using this tool right now to log the data to collect the data um, I do need channel A to be in the split IO mode so I'm going to ask channel A to be in the split IO mode in fact I can also select channel B to be in the split IO mode as well um, and I don't need either of them on because I'm not using them uh, as supplies let me go down here and talk about some of the options that we have uh, at the bottom right corner we have the option to log the data to a file so I'm going to check that because I want to collect the data so I'm going to select that um, I've not collect started collecting yet but when I say run it is going to collect the data in a particular file and I'll show you where it where it uh, saves that data the other option I want to talk about is the samples per second so right now it is at 50 samples per second SPS stands for samples per second so that means that in one second it is taking 50 equally distant voltage measurements if I go lower than 50 then I'm going to be able to get you know a slower acquisition so I, I can keep going down in order to uh, acquire data that goes on for a very very long time so for example if I wanted to uh, take data that goes on for one minute or two minutes then I want I maybe want the sample per seconds to be very small maybe five samples per second will will, will be good enough for that okay but for this application 50 let us try uh, to see if 50 is good uh, if not then we can increase or decrease uh, let's see I need channel A I don't need channel B and they're both in split IO mode so I think we are good to start recording the data so what I'll do is I will uh, hit run and then quickly go to my board to connect it to the power supply so you will see that waveform come in from the right I have connected it to plus 5 volts now and we see that the green line for channel A has jumped to 5 volts and if I'm now going that it has charged the capacitor I'm going to now disconnect it and see how it discharges so as soon as I disconnected it we can see that the exponential discharge of the capacitor uh, is being recorded here so depending on the choice of R and C you can make this a very very slow discharge or a very fast discharge so if you want to make it slow then you just increase your R or your C uh, that is a complete cycle so I can I can do it again just to show you guys the same thing again so 5 volts connected it goes up to 5 and then I'm going to remove it and as soon as I remove it it's going to uh, decay it's going to discharge uh, exponentially all right so what I'll do next is I will uh, stop here for the data acquisition and I will show you guys where this data got collected so uh, if you open up your uh, file explorer and go into your C drive you will see a folder called ALM software and inside ALM software you might see M1K and inside M1K as you can see uh, at 6.47 p.m. which is just now there is a strip chart that was recorded in the form of CSV so if I double click on this hold on okay so if I double click on this it is going to share with me try this again okay all right so it shares with me the uh, Excel file on the leftmost column I have time 
and in column B I have channel A voltage on channel column C I have channel B voltage uh, but the the things that I am uh, really looking for is the channel A so channel A went to 5 when we started discharging and if I keep going down for later times you will see that it it would go down so you see it it has started exponentially decaying over here uh, so that's how you export data to uh, CSV using the data logger and you can take this data to uh, MATLAB for instance uh, and then uh, try to fit uh, another exponential curve to that which is described by the same equation which is uh, e to the negative t over tau so we can we can we can do that uh, very nicely to see how our experimental data matches the uh, equation all right, let me go back to the thing here. We, we have observed how the capacitor discharges through the capacitor by measuring the voltage across the capacitor on A in, we did that. And we have also seen how to export the data to CSV. All right, I, I hope you found this uh, demo helpful uh, to uh, you know charge a capacitor and discharge it at a particular rate. Uh, how do you choose those values? Uh, what happens when you charge it? What happens when you discharge it? How do you save the data uh, or uh, acquire the data in a particular CSV file. All right, see you guys in the next video.